Well, I'm Tim Lofts. So I'm a freelance sound designer working out of the company called On Air Sound Design. But I mainly work out of Scramble Studios, who are one of the sort of key sound design studios in Soho. So I've been doing it for 25, 26 years now, and I love it. It's like having fun every day. I suppose one of the biggest projects I worked on was the National Lottery launch back in the 1990s. And I did all the sound for all the adverts for about two years on that. And everyone knows the it's you. And uh, yeah, that was one of my big jobs. I've done a lot of work on British Airways. Um, I've done lots of work on uh, Vauxhall cars. I've done a lot of work on um, Virgin Media. This is one of the jobs I work on at the moment. Um, but I've kind of worked on every big brand that's ever been on TV, I think, in the past 20 years. That's probably a big claim, but it is quite true. The majority of the work that I do is commercials. Uh, and so I'd use that as an example. When, they've, when you've been out and filmed the commercial, they've not always had the sound recorded with it. Uh, and so I might get a 30-second film in. Uh, and it's the same applies to TV programmes and films. You get uh, a film edit into you. Uh, and it may have no sound at all. So there may be a car driving past, um, there may be a doorbell being rung, so you'll see someone push the finger on the doorbell, but in actual fact that doorbell hasn't rung, so I put that in afterwards and I, and I make all the silence, I, bring it to, I, I make it real, make what's going on a bit real. Um, so if the car has gone past and I find a suitable car to go past, uh, and uh, it's not just a case of finding any old car, it's finding the right car, the right speed, the right road conditions. Um, and, uh, and then build the sort of montage of sound up, all the different layers of what's going on in the picture. Uh, and then balance it out to sound as natural as possible. Uh, when you're watching TV and you watch a TV program, there's actually so much of that sound it isn't real. But the listener or the viewer won't, won't realise that because my job is to make it sound as real as possible. And so you don't actually notice what I've done. If you're doing your job properly, no, you, you don't, no one notices what you've done. Um, the only thing you'll notice it is when it's been done badly, if it's not been done that well. Uh, and that's one of the things we always say, you know, you never notice good sound, but you'll, you'll notice bad sound straight away. Uh, and that's one of the things I always stress on. Well, um, you'll find anyone like me who's a sound engineer, we always get upset about the same things and not enough uh, emphasis placed on the sound of a project. And what I uh, don't like is if you're watching something online, an online video, and they've made it look really good with the graphics, um, uh, or they've done a really good presentation, uh, but the sound is awful. So they may have recorded the guy in vision from a camera mic 15 feet away, and all you're getting is the ambience and echoiness of the room. Uh, and it doesn't take much uh, to make that sound good. The visuals may look great, and they just say, oh yeah, we don't, the sound will be fine, but it's not fine. And I can't watch something with bad sound. I will turn it off. Uh, there's a video online. Um, I'll get 10 seconds into it. The sound's bad. I haven't, got, I haven't got the patience to sit through it. Um, and that may be being precious, but I, I think other people think the same thing. You'll notice it. It, it makes some, the difference between something sound cheap and well presented. And good sound doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to have a bit of thought put to it. Just sort of realizing the importance of a bit of decent sound work. I know there's a phrase about use uh, on, for online stuff, there's like the lean in or lean back viewing. Uh, you know, the, with online you tend to be leaning in because you're looking at your PC at home if you're on TV watch lean back. In actual fact, what you want to make is the whole thing is a lean back experience, really. You want somebody to watch something online and go, oh yeah, that's nice, rather than saying, what was that? And that's the same thing with, you know, that, that a lot has to do with the audio. I just, you know, you'll, you'll really not enjoy the experience with bad audio. The good thing about this, working on this job is that this source audio has been looked after. It's, it's, it's good sound, it's been uh, properly managed throughout the process of going from all the transfers. What I've done to it, when, where you do the edit, you can never get eliminate background sound completely. So where you have cuts on some of the dialogue, um, a hard cut, you will notice, you'll notice a hard cut listening to it. So what I try and do is make it just smooth out the edges, like polishing some of the, the edges off of a sort of sharp piece of wood. Um, and that way, the listener that doesn't get anything jarring and doesn't go, ooh, what was that? Uh, and then with the music underneath it, we like to sort of shape the music so it's not loud all the way through like it may be on an advert or it's just too quiet in background. We sort of use the peaks and troughs of the, of the dialogue. And also, so it's a seven minute piece. Uh, if I'm making it sound like a TV advert, seven minutes of a TV advert would just, 
you'd be doing that, you'd be wincing. So what I try and do here is be a bit more um, considerate to the listener uh, and to make it make sure it's easy on the ear as well. The music that was sent over is actually a mixed piece, which is just kind of perfect for me really because I'm not a music engineer. Music engineers and post-production engineers have a slightly different set of skills. So um, there'll be bits I've been looking out for that a musician won't look out for. Uh, and um, so the music for me came in, it came in really nicely. I've just done a bit of compression on it, which is just makes take some of the peaks off of it. And that's because if you're listening to the piece of music as a standalone piece, that would be fine, but it's working against dialogue. Uh, and I don't want it to fight with the dialogue. I don't want, I want to be able to hear everything um, that's been said to us. So just by taking some of the peaks off the music and squashing it slightly, um, it's just eased it through. And the music was great. It, it, it changes tempo in different places, and uh, but the overall feel of it was much the same. So it was it was a good piece of music to work with. Because the um, uh, seven minute film is so long, you 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 have to be a bit more uh, considerate to who, for someone sitting there listening to something. You can't blast somebody uh, blast some sound at someone for seven minutes long. They'll just be going like that, or they'll turn it off, or they just turn it down. Uh, with the teaser. I've treated it much more like a commercial. Now a lot of people do complain about the commercials are too loud and, and that's something that's been addressed in the past couple of years. Um, the truth is com commercials aren't louder than a TV program but they have more loud bits for longer and that's how I've mixed the, the teaser. So it's much more like a commercial, the music's really loud, it's really pumping, um, everything's really tight and um, uh, you know, for a short period of time you can, you can handle that, you can listen to that without having any trouble. If I did seven minutes of that, well, after after a minute and a half, you'd be you'd be switching it off. It, that would be my equivalent of doing bad sound. Uh, it, it, it's taken in consideration of what it's being used for. I think um, web-based content is is clearly where everyone's moving, and um, the good thing about that is you can deliver a package to someone's home, which is of better quality, audio-wise and visual-wise, and um, uh, where people haven't been paying attention to it. I'd like to think people will start paying more attention to it because we can certainly do cleverer things that we, we, we spend our whole day working stereo, the majority of the day at working stereo, but the, for an engineer and a sound designer like myself, just the, the, the fun you get from doing stuff in surround sound and 5.1 and 7.1, whatever it might be, it's, it's great fun. It's like, it's, it's, that's what you do it for, for the fun of doing that. And we don't get to do it every day because there's no call for it every day. I would imagine the best sort of stuff we can work on as a, as a, as a uh, sound designer is um, a bit something with a bit of sci-fi, with lots of whooshes and bangs. Because that's like playing. We all like to play. And uh, hopefully web-based content will demand more of that, as long as the budget's there to support the, the, uh, the creating of it. That's where I think, um, that, that's where it falls over. And again, that's where sound falls over. Uh, the sound gets to the end of the chain and everyone forgets about it and they say, oh, we've only got this much money or we've only got this many hours. What can you do? And sometimes it's a rescue job rather than a, a creative job. And I prefer creative jobs. <laughs>